Okay, I think we can start. Uh, so I think uh, I take this opportunity to welcome you all to this webinar, uh, a webinar that we've organized uh, through our collaboration uh, with AMI and also uh, with India. Uh, I'll want to take just a few minutes just to introduce ourselves, our organization Montessori for Kenya, and then I can welcome our guest speaker Helen, who is going to take us through our uh, topic for discussion today. Um, uh, Montessori for Kenya um, is an army affiliated society in Kenya, uh, which got its affiliation uh, last year in Amsterdam. And um, the main aim is to advocate for you know, adoption of high quality, uh, authentic uh, Montessori education in Kenya, uh, particularly you know, for the most disadvantaged uh, communities. Um, we have quite a number of objectives, but I'll just talk about uh, just uh, very few objectives uh, that uh, we want to target as an organization. Uh, first of all, you know, we want to ensure that there is quality in everything that we do. So quality assurance and professional development support uh, to our training centers and schools. Uh, we want to establish some system of accreditation, some system of having uh, promotion of high quality Montessori in Kenya. Um, we also engaged in uh, 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 implementation of projects and ensuring that we give that project management oversight. Uh, they, for quite a number of years, they've been uh, the uh, Help the Children project in Kenya. Uh, most of us would be familiar with the, the Conovo project, which has also you know, given birth to uh, other uh, affiliate projects uh, in Kisima, other organizations. Let's say in Samburu, we have uh, projects that have come up. So we are giving some project management oversight to these projects, ensuring that uh, there is high quality in the implementation of these projects. And then a major task that we want to be involved in is issue of advocacy, advocacy and relationship uh, management uh, with the partner organizations that we work with here in Kenya and outside of Kenya, uh, local uh, organizations in Kenya, uh, and uh, more importantly, the government in ensuring that we are, you know, advocating for Montessori within Kenya. Um, we would want also to uh, participate very much in research, uh, research in ways that is going to cement the existence of Montessori in Kenya. Already, you know, we have uh, 10 years of existence of Conor Hall, and uh, there has been a lot that has happened during this period. So we doing impact studies, to show the impact of establishment of such uh, projects in Kenya and the effect on the children, uh, more so even collaborating with the uh, renowned researchers like Adele Diamond to look into executive function and to see how it's going to, it, uh, Montessori itself is having an effect on the children. Um, and then um, um, we want to do long term, you know, uh, planning uh, and strategic uh, growth of Montessori in Kenya. and. Ultimately, we want to connect with uh, all AMI networks yeah, in Africa, here in Kenya, in Africa, and internationally. So it is in regard to that connection uh, that with other army networks that we've been talking, and we were able to you know, have discussions with AMI, have discussions with LNG Media, and uh, discussing you know, the scenario that is happening in Kenya, uh, worldwide, in terms of COVID-19. Uh, this has affected us, it has changed the way in which we are operating, and all of us have been forced to adapt in one way or the other, and of course, more concerned about the children that are at home. So um, we've been organizing sessions, our teachers are having sessions where they are talking to one another, encouraging one another, uh, having reading discussions of Montessori books, and we thought that it would be good, uh, you know, to share experiences with our guest speaker today, Ellen, uh, who is going to share with us, you know, based on experiences, uh, how do we incorporate, you know, Montessori principles and how are we, how can we handle, you know, parenting and community engagement in terms of, in times of this uh, COVID uh, scenario. So, uh, uh, without much ado, I would like to take this opportunity to invite Ellen. Ellen is going to take us through the presentation. And then in case we have any, any question, anything that we want to add, you can either type in or ask questions at the end of our presentation. Ellen, uh, welcome, Karibu. 
Hari Bu. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm going I'm going to start right Hillary. Yes, yes, Hillary. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you. Thank you Hillary. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and for thinking that I will be able to do something for Kenya. Thank you for the trust you had in me. <clears throat> and um, Hi, everybody. I really can't see everybody there. I, I can see few faces and I'm glad I can see at least few faces. It's such a situation. I don't think, uh, I mean, uh, it's new to all of us to be talking in a room to a screen without knowing what the responses are from the people. But anyway, I assume that all of you are able to hear me and see me and hopefully connect with what I'm going to say. Um, so. Yeah, so is my voice audible or should I speak more loudly or any such corrections and then we'll go ahead. I think it's audible enough from my side, yeah. yeah. Okay. So first of all, I want all of us here to understand why we are doing this webinar. I mean, what was our aim behind it? Just now the situation that we are in, I don't know, um, whether it's going to go away or it's going to stay or it's a new normal. We really don't know. But for the, for the moment, let's assume that it's going to be a new normal. And you know, the sooner we accept this fact, the faster we will be able to come up with uh, innovative ideas and start living life. I mean, life cannot be, life cannot be like this standstill forever. So the faster we accept this, the I mean, the, the, the sooner we accept, the faster we will be able to live life and go ahead with it. And it's, you know, why, why such problems? Why are we thinking this way is because, because of all the restrictions. We are not used to these restrictions. We just lived life differently before. And now we have a lot of restrictions and we have to live with those restrictions. And why, and why are we, again, all this is why, why, why are, why this webinar is to help children and all of us also, not just children, along with everybody living with the children to live life happily. I mean, it's, it's not as if we, we are not going to live. We will live, but the aim is to live happily. So let's look at what all should we be doing to live happily so that the children around us and in our community are happy. That, that's the main aim and purpose. And you know, when I spoke to Hillary and Faye, when we discussed, we thought, what should we do to help parents and community to help children live happily? Yeah. And earlier, uh, you know, when children came back home, they all went to school and whatever the adults at home wanted to do, they had their space. And when children came back home, they were exhausted and there was no need for them to do, continue doing school work at home. So whatever little space, I mean, they complemented. But now things are not like that. We have to coexist from the time we wake up the whole day with everybody living at home. We ha all have to coexist, yet live happily. And all that we are doing from the time we wake up to sleep, children are looking at us all the time. So we have to be mindful of all of these. And we thought, you know, we should help the parents and the community in which the children are living so that we can help children live happily. And that's the aim of this, the purpose of this webinar. So we'll, I have some guiding principles, which is going to help us stay connected with our goal, help us to focus on our goal. And the guiding principles will be observe, reflect, plan, modify, and implement. So every time, every situation, any questions, you know, all the questions that we, I keep getting from parents are their observations. Just now also, we are going to have questions at the end of the session. And that, that would have been your observation in your home with your children, with, the, with whatever situation. So we are going to, and you know, so we are going to try and understand based on our observation, what and why whatever observations are going to be and we're going to connect it to the children and then we'll reflect reflect on the situation reflect on the children with their age group and then we have to make plans if 
you know, if those observations are not supportive to children, we have to make plans to modify our current status and current lifestyle so that the children are happy. And then finally, implement all those plans. So these five points are going to be our guiding principle. And my slide will focus on each of this. Yeah. So when I said observe, what are we going to observe? As parents, you know, our focus is children below six years. But I would want to broadly uh, orient parents to what will they observe so that they will be able to reflect on later. So let's look at children below six years. All, you know, children are born, I mean, they have a purpose. They all have certain functions and they have needs to support that purpose. And children below six years, their function and purpose of their activity and, you know, the, all their needs, all their activities, all that they are doing is around physical independence. So we will go further. I will focus more on children below six years as to how to help them so that we can support their physical independence, physical development, eventually leading to physical independence. And if you have children between six to 12 years, it's their need for development is on intellectual development. So what will, what will you observe? That they will be asking lots of questions. Anything you tell them will be why, why, why this, why that, why that. We should know that the, uh, the characteristic feature of these children, the need for these children is to develop their intelligence. And that's why they are asking all those questions. And so we should develop patience to answer their questions or what will we do, what will we do if we don't know the answer? We will look up, look up for answers. So our duty will be to connect children to those resources. So, you know, these are the things that we should look out for when we are observing children, when we're having children at home and children between 12 to 18 years, they are striving to be emotionally independent. So just now in this situation, you know, I, uh, one observation was one parent called me to say my son was very happy and everything was fine. I've never seen him become so emotional. Uh, you know, he started crying and he said, uh, are we going to die? Will I also die? Uh, will I get to go to school and meet my friends? And he was crying very bitterly and the mother didn't know what to do. So she called up, that's her observation. And when she called up, the first question I asked was, how old is he? And she said, he's 14 now. Oh, so what is our understanding? What will I reflect on? That this child is striving to be emotionally independent. In, there's independent, uh, develop, in, uh, emotional development happening around. So uh, this child is not asking questions around why this and you know why COVID, what is this? Uh, why vaccination? Why can't we go out? And the questions are not around that because the child understands. He's got an intellectual understanding of this, but he's very upset. So what do we do for such children? We will see later as to what we will plan. Just now, I want you to understand different age group and what their needs will be. I don't know if you people have children around these ages, but just as a heads up, I would like to draw the main attention to what kind of uh, needs will children of different ages have. And children between 18 to 24, they're going through social in development. Finally, they are physically independent, they are intellectually independent, they are in emotionally independent. And now they are striving to be socially independent by contributing. They have all the knowledge, they have all the understanding and these children may come up with solutions. They, they may come up with saying, you know, there are lots of children in our locality and I think they are hungry and we need to serve them food and I want to cook or maybe I want to meet, I want to collect some of my friends and with our pocket money, we want to serve children with food or find some job. I, I really don't know what, I'm just giving you some vague examples. I don't know if it's relevant in your place, but if you have children between 18 to 24 and if they're coming up with some suggestions and solutions to contribute to the community, I think we should take them serious because they are striving and they have all the energy and that's what they want to do. And so if they have questions around that or if they're, uh, they're upset about things around that, so different age groups, you have to look at which age they are and support them relevantly. Um, that's just a broad understanding, but my focus will be children below six years. And what is the task of children below six years? They are creating their personality. 
we have to understand that and support them in this creation of human functions what is those what are those human functions language development movement development and and you know the the cultural norms that whatever in whichever community they are living in those cultural norms these are going to become part of their personality this is this is the creation they are working at creating themselves creating their personality in terms of the physical and mental faculties we have to support them and you know the another major task is of adapting now their job right now is to adapt to the time place and situation that they are in so we have to be mindful of these things and support children this is another very big question that everybody keeps asking is education what is education which everybody is worried about world all over people are worried what's going to happen to education you know i want to draw your attention to the academic loss which is negligible loss in comparison to the other various other losses that's a, that's happening immediately in this situation this can you know it can be caught up later it can be picked up later we are not going to lose much if there's academic loss but let's look at look at the definition of education what is education education is aid for life this is what montessori said montessori said education is help for life aid for life and what is life life for anybody and everybody in a situation they should be able to live life face situations and live it and just now children below 6 years for them life is to create themselves they are developing themselves irrespective of whatever is happening outside their development is not going to stop so that is life and that's education if we can time and again remind ourselves especially children below 6 years at least children beyond about 12 about 6 years you still have uh, you know zoom classes for them you can guide them into reading or reflecting or doing their own researches there's lots that you can do for children above 6 years but for children below 6 years I and mean, they won't be able to understand they can't sit in front of uh, the gadgets for too long and it's very difficult to relate to them and what is their development can they write can they read immediately no because they are yet to develop their movements they are yet to develop their language they have to become physically independent if they don't have coordination what can they write so even if they were coming to school if they were going to the, you know our montessori environments we would have focused on movement development language development and help them with uh, you know learning all their uh, the cultural norms through various presentations and various activities so i can't see why uh it's difficult to help children at home so edu this is education so if we can understand this point clearly and focus on how to support children with their life which is nothing but education and you know what do we have to reflect and plan to support this life that is constructing and developing and they have this ability to do things at home all that i spoke they have the ability to do things at home and all the more it is personalized involvement you know because each home has their own structure they have their own um, you know system to live and this i think this is the best and the safest place for children to be involved in real purpose and contribute and also be involved in real contribution not make do Uh, yeah, you know in a in a in a montessori environment how we will create an environment to best support the child in his development but just imagine a home where the child is living his life really there how much better the involvement will be you know i feel so nice that covid is giving us this opportunity to look at our own home environments and see how well this environment is um, prepared for this child to live his life and create the child who is working at self creation self construction and you know and home is the best place to capitalize this ability to create a being who's caring who's compassionate and all this begins at home by being involved in the day to day activities 
and we want children we want you know every time i talk to parents they say we, i want my child to be uh, you know sympathetic empathetic i want them to relate to the situations outside and understand how will that happen how can you expect uh, you know a child who is 15 and 16 who's never been exposed to never been given opportunities to care and be compassionate and involve and contribute suddenly out of a, out of the blue how can we expect them to contribute so this i mean i think you know this is god given situation where we are involving children right from the beginning to and this is critical to the child's development all this just now i told and you know connecting children to nature connecting them to people all this is very critical to their development we should be we should think about this and prepare the environment to live independently which will support support is all round development and this is education and this education cannot be stopped you know even if the school is closed even everything is closed outside this education what i'm talking about this development cannot be stopped that will continue and we need to support so once we have observed children of various ages and whatever is their behavior we have to reflect based on our on the observation and understanding of the needs my earlier slides spoke about their needs if their needs are met the children will be happy and they will be able to do what they are meant to you know construct so we have to last few months i've had so many um, observations and questions from parents based on what they have gone through and then when we reflected we were able to find solutions for all of that by planning and modifying you know our guiding principles i started saying that keeping that in mind we were able to help we don't have answers each one of us have to follow those guiding principles and arrive at uh, solutions for the observation based on the children's needs and once we have reflected after observing uh, once we have reflected what will we do as i told you this child cried and then we realize this is going through a emotional phase what will we do we have to plan there should be some action what is that we would want to do first of all we have to orient the child to what it is what the situation is of what of this covid about what scientific facts objective observation not what is there on whatsapp not what's there on news you know so this positive discussion that i'm talking about and uh, also i started i mean the the slide says psychological uh, safety what is that giving positive uh, information not watching news uh, you know i have seen people i know of people who wake up and turn on the tv to watch news from the time they wake up to the time they sleep they are seeing they are just watching news and i i hope we realize news doesn't change from the morning till night it's the same news and how does it support us in our development it makes us very unhappy it makes us feel sad it gives us so much of insecurity gives us lot of stress and what does stress do studies say that it pulls our immune system down stress actually you know uh, our immune system suffers if we are stressed if we are anxious if we are depressed and if we are worried th this insecurity actually leads to stress and that pulls our immune system down just now for this covid situation what is required our immune sh system should be good and don't you think this is a beautiful way of keeping our immune system up by not involving ourselves in all the news maybe end of the day you can just uh, get some information just to keep update otherwise you don't have to do any of those and if we collect that news what do we do we start talking about it we just not talk with people around us but we call up and talk people or talk to people forgetting that we have children around us so it's very important to be mindful of that we have children and that children are looking at us all the time so we have to we have to give children the information but information should be should be scientific facts and objective observation it's not our duty i don't think we should talk about from where did this come how does it matter it's come now we can't do anything about it who is the cause you know which country brought this 
and now create all this hatred for that country. And in our own community, who brought it? Where did they go? Why did they go for the party? And why are they bringing, you know, instead of doing all these talks, which is not at all required because it's come now, we can't do anything about it. It's best not to pass on all this negativity to children because we are going to leave them behind in this world. We'll be gone whenever time comes. But it's this children, these children who are going to be the future citizens of the world. We want them to be loving, caring, not with their, just their immediate homes, but with the universe, which is, or every country will be, is part of it. So instead of sowing negative seeds in their mind, which is going to grow, which is going to grow and not just grow in size, but then it's going to change their whole personality. And you're going to leave negative children behind. So it's important to be mindful of that. And you know, the school closure, just to trouble uh, children, uh, if children are troubling at home, they say from Monday, you have to start going to school. You know, just like that, they want to play food. And some children are looking forward to go to school. And if Monday comes and if they're not going, how upset will they be? This is the psychological safety I want you to think about. Talk the truth. I mean, tell them if the school's going to open, it's going to open. If, if it's, it's closed, it has, you know, that's what you have to say. And another thing is we don't know when the school is going to open. Why give false information to children? And another beautiful thing, you know, I've constantly been thinking of, about this is, you know, we say our, our yesterday is gone, our past, we can't do anything about it. We don't know our future. We have to live in the present. It's so easy to talk about it, but how are we going to implement? This situation is God-given. So unpredictable. So much of uncertainty. Even if we want to, we have no information to tell children about. Isn't that a blessing that we really don't have anything to tell children? When are we going to go to school? When things are going to settle? When vaccination is going to come? When are we going to get back to our old state? We don't know. And so beautiful is that. Can't we? And this, you know, this situation is is so beautiful that we can live, we can introduce children to this living life one day at a time. I can't even say one day at a time, just this moment, give yourself, live it full and happily. And I think accepting situations as they come and living life happily. And every time with anything, happily should be our end goal and you know, um, point of arrival should be happiness work situations also share the facts i'm not going to talk about the physical safety measures people have become so so good at it that, uh, that it's pointless that i talk about it it's only the psychological safety that i wish to talk and media you know safe media for all age groups not just for children how how what does that do good to elders nothing it's only depression and you know, we, we are sad all the time and it's negativity. That's what is that what we are brewing. If we watch, you know, constant news and talk continuously about all that comes on WhatsApp. And now we, we saw, we observed, we reflected based on our observation. And then we are, uh, you know, we have plans and what are those plans I discussed what we have to modify because the life that we lived before was different you know we we got up in the morning children went to school all of us went to work and things were different you didn't need to have things at home um, you know organized for children for the whole day but now it's different we can't do we can't modify outside world we can't do anything about it can we modify our homes for children yes we can so we have to you know and why should we modify our homes because it's not just for one uh, for an hour or two that the children are going to stay at home it's the whole day that they're going to be here and what is our aim that they have peace and happiness at home because they have, they have nowhere else to go not just the children none of us have we, we have nowhere to go where there is peace and safety i think our our home is the best place where we can find happiness which is safe and we can find peace and so home is the only place that we can modify I mean, it's uh, which whatever you know lifestyle we are living in, whatever home size that we have, whatever comforts we have, we, we should try and look at tweaking that place to modify to suit our current needs. And so 
what is the first thing that we need we need to have order there should be consistent structure at home i know of families i don't know why they have this understanding that they are all on vacation right now so some of them you know uh, another question from a parent came that this one child you know they had a, a child who was two and a half years was crying uh, you know bitterly and then they couldn't console this child and they also didn't know what was wrong and when i asked them so that's the reflection part when i asked them what's for what the child was crying it seems you know at 11 o'clock the in the morning or 12 this child was given uh, breakfast whereas this is lunch time whether we like it or no our body clock will tell us this is lunch time at least for children you know that's the order that this child has been going through i mean some of us montessorians know this child is going through a sensitive period for order and for this child around 12 noon this child is ready to men uh, you know ready to eat lunch and not breakfast but whereas the parents are waking up late because it's vacation they are not going to work the children are not going to school they are waking up late so the first thing they are doing is having breakfast and this is not acceptable by children and this is what i want to drop draw the adults attention to covid has changed our lifestyle our lifestyle but nature hasn't changed the sun rises at the same time it's morning at the same time whether we like it or no it becomes night at the same time days are just passing by and but we have changed our lifestyle we are waking up late and everything else and so our work schedule is changed we have to look at this and modify it to suit the current situation for the children's sake and we have to time and again remind ourselves that these children are constructing themselves they are constructing their personality and for that they need order they need consistent structure in their way of life and for that we also need to create space for them at home for this near for this new situation earlier they had only a few hours at home and they were exhausted in school but just now they need all their things so we have to look at bringing things down keeping it at their reach and making things available for them in my next slide i will talk about few activities few things that can be made available for children for below 6 years children to cater to their needs and there should be structure in the day with daily routines it it you just cannot live with uncertainty we all know what uncertainty does to us when we don't know what we are going to do next but if we have a system in our life each home you know each home follows different system and if we have that and follow it strictly with time and be aware of the needs of the children having a proper structure is very critical for children below 6 years and such a home which understands the need of the child reflects lot of love for the children and supporting their needs you know will help them live life happily and now rest of my slides and my time i'm going to focus on implementation which is which will be practical tips you know the first thing that i want to communicate is positive communication positive communication not just verbal communication but everything put together is very very important for children i already spoke to you about what uh, positive talks does to children and you know you know if if we are talking negative things and just in front of children we cannot switch you know we cannot uh, now pretend to be talking positive the best would be even for us it, that does good is to think positive and talk positive so that it becomes our habit becomes part of our personality and then we don't have to pretend we don't have to model in front of children just to talk positive in front of them if we start thinking positive even our mindset our body language everything will change to support children and another thing i want to draw your attention to is children of this age cannot follow sermons or instructions they only can imitate you know they have this beautiful tendency to imitate and that's a that's a wonderful power that they have and so if if your body language and your conversation is all positive 
definitely, you know, it will be passed on to children and they also will have this positive talk. And following, you know, uh, uh, the practices of uh, hygiene practice, I would say, ha, huh, doesn't matter. We are at home. You don't have to do it. You know, it's very important. Whenever we wash, whenever I wash my hand with soap, I feel so secure. I feel if I eat something with my hand now, nothing is going to happen to me. You know that we, we have to pass this sense of security to ch children. This positive, you know, this positive communication of sense of security is vital just now. We have to be mindful of this and pass it on to children, whether, uh, you know, and not take this uh, very, you know, light or uh, you know and think doesn't matter you know we, it's it's important that we pass this on to them and you know all the law so the, the government has given us many mandatory rules when we go out what to do it's important that we discuss with children about that so that you know we are passing on to them respect for law and it's important also to stay connected just now we are not physically uh, able to connect with people but uh, we have to periodically make calls so that the children know our uh, know you know the parents their grandparents their cousins and in that part of their discussion they will get to know that all of them are going through the same situation and that will also boost their confidence and also make them feel secure that it's not just them that who's going through this difficult time and it's all over the world. And you know, this, uh, this makes, gives us this feeling of oneness. Even just now for all of us, at least we knew it before that this whole universe is one, but this COVID has also, you know, uh, focused on that and brought to our understanding that all of us are one and everywhere everybody is going through this you know same situation and look at the uh, vocabulary so many new terminologies that we are using which we never used before lockdown pandemic epidemic mask sanitization you know so many i just can i'm, I'm bringing to your notice few children you, you know, just now they're going through language development. They're going through a sensitive period for language. It, it'll just, they're just picking up naturally. You know, my four-year-old niece talks about, uh, you know, when she prays, she says, God, give children knowledge not to go out and, you know, get infected with Corona. Help them to wear mask and go. I'm wondering, you know, how did this girl know about Corona? And she has, they have to wear mask and they have to sanitize their hand and you know so much of vocabulary and constantly they're talking about it and so make use of this situation to give use uh, these new vocabulary and enrich the children's vocabulary through this and we also know whatever we are doing in our lives we have come up with innovative ways of um, helping children or lives you know, human race, human uh, civilization has evolved. When there's a crisis, we, we get more creative. We get more innovative. So get creative and think of ways, different ways of communicating to children. You can't, uh, you know, people keep asking, how are we going to communicate to children this and that? And, you know, how to talk to people because we're not meeting people. Now all the, you know, social etiquettes, how are we going to pass on all this? We don't know. I don't think anybody has a big exhaustive list to give to people as to what to do with children. I think each one of us, everybody's got a lot of creativity within us. And when we are pushed to a corner, we'll get more creative. So necessity is the mother of invention. Didn't come just like that. I think, you know, just now all of us are, can get creative and come up with innovative ways to pass on. Um, you know, good values, how to communicate to children. We all have to arrive at it uh, in our own homes and share with everybody so that, uh, I mean, not one idea will not work with the other. So, you know, having big list of innovative ideas to communicate, I think we all have to come up with it on our own. And then another part of the implementation is daily life activities. I, I spoke to you about it earlier that we have to have structure and have activities. 
please do not have separate timetable for children. This is another thing that I want to bring it to your notice. You know, parents suddenly they have now a, a timetable made. I, I am, you know, enjoying dusting. And then I expect my child to sit in one corner and write handwriting or write tables. Is that doable? Is that practical? I don't think it will work. Maybe if you terrorize the child, the child may sit for a day or two. Is that sustainable? Will that last forever? Can we think about this? I think, you know, I just want, to, want you as parents to think about this. What will children want to do? They just want to do all that we do. And so involve the child in the daily work. If the first thing when you wake up is, uh, if, if it is part of your practice to make the bed, involve the child in making the bed. If it's your practice to first go and use the washroom, involve the child. I mean, the child has to relieve himself and wash and clean. So involve the child in that activity and not uh, find another uh, timetable for the child in his routine. And all, all that we do, just now all of us are at home, involve children in whatever capacity. If we have children of different age groups, involve them with their capacities in the activity that we are doing. All of us should do the same activity. And if it's children below six years and more so children below three years, focus on the process, not on the end result. I know this is what I want to draw your attention to. If they are involved, if I'm carrying, if I'm carrying a big plate, I, I, I expect the child to carry the plate. And if it is too big, I'm going to carry. And if the child is just going to hold and walk with you, the child is involved in this activity of transporting the table, I mean, the, the plate from the kitchen to the table, or shifting whatever, or doing, if, we are, if I'm folding clothes, if small children are involved in folding smaller clothes, the child is involved in the process of folding the clothes. How perfect they're going to fold, doesn't matter. So please don't focus on the end result. And their time, their pace is different. Also be mindful of, you, you can't get them to do things fast. And we have lots of time now. I think this is the best time that you can involve children in the activity and look at, focus on their process and give them enough time to work on. And through this, I think we will automatically develop patience. If we can't, we should work at developing patience. And it's not just enough that we are aware of this, that we have to focus on their process and not on their end result and give them enough time and be patient, but also orient other members in the home about all these things. It's because if somebody else, you know, looks at the way they are doing work, it can shatter their, their focus, concentration and confidence. They may not want to do it after that. If, you know, in India, when children are involved in sweeping, they may not sweep. The, the floor may not get clean end of their sweeping but they have spent time in that sweeping. If somebody says, can you see, look at the dust here? There's, you didn't collect in, you know, you didn't sweep properly. That can shatter their confidence and they may not want to do things later. And then, you know, people turn back, parents turn back and say, you said involve them in the activity. My child doesn't want to do things. Yes, if he's being criticized, if he's being pulled up all the time, why will this child want to do? So we have to be aware of all these things and keep that aside and just be, just focus on um, their involvement and I have a list of activities it's not an exhaustive list just to give you an idea of you know we started looking at um, the physical independence children below six years are striving to be physically independent and they are developing their movement they created their movement and it has to be developed consolidated and rectified if you know if any unnecessary movement has to be shed off and rectified that can happen only through utilization be it movement be it language be it following culture or any custom all that was created can be consolidated will be consolidated and become part of their personality only only if it is utilized and how can they utilize what is created if we create opportunities for them to put to use all that was created. So let's look at what all can be done for children. I have made this list and this need not be your list. You make a list to suit your own lifestyle, your own homes and your own communities. What your home practices are, you, 
I mean, you can make a list for your own homes for your children. This is what I could think from my own front. You know, all of us have to brush our teeth. Most of the children. What do we do? We don't let children brush their teeth. We put paste for them and we brush their teeth. Now is the time to uh, help children to, you know, apply paste on their brush themselves. So what are we first going to do? Bring all these accessories down. Make it available for them. Or put a stool for them so that they can climb and take it. Show them how much to press. How, how much paste to put on the brush. All this is going to support them with their pincer movements, with their prehensile movements, their large body movements, if they're going to climb up and come down and put, their, put the paste on their brush and brush their own teeth. What is our worry? They may not brush properly. What is the guarantee that if we brush for them that it's going to be clean? Doesn't matter. And, and another worry is they'll be wasting paste. How much paste will they lose? As, as long as you know, uh, they get control over their how much to press, when to stop, how much paste to take. You know, all this is so much uh, you know, involvement of their mental faculties and their physical faculties, all their functions. And you know, make available, create opportunities for them to select their own clothes before having bath create opportunities for them to have their own bath. This will help support them in their movement, in their coordination of movement, and so much of work happening with their focus and concentration. Once they have taken care of themselves, next activity that they can look at is beautifying. How wonderful it will be if they can uh, apply cream and powder, and in, in our country, we put bottu here. Can you see this, what I'm putting? How does it matter if it's big or small or somewhere else? You know, uh, and when the child looks at themselves in the mirror, it's an opportunity for them to look at and see what is not all right and gives them an opportunity to rectify if they want to or let, let them be the way they want. And how does it matter if they're going to put rubber band here and not here and make a good braid or look beautiful? We are giving, creating opportunities for them. And this is education because they are supporting their, 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 their development, their self-construction. Only with these opportunities, they will be able, and these are their needs, and this is what we are supposed to cater to. And now let's look at the home, you know, care of home. We spoke about care of self, and next activities around care of home environment is cleaning and beautifying. We do dusting, sweeping, mopping. I don't know what you do in your country. Look at the activities that you know, need to do to keep the environment clean, to keep the home environment clean, the outdoor environment clean. Involve children in all these activities. And care of other members at home. If you have elderly members, they can serve water, supply things, get their glass or get the, you know, it is, we said care, love, care, empathy, sympathy, all this can be nurtured created, nurtured and supported and developed if they are involved in activities at home. And what is what are we doing? All of it together. And they are involved in the activities. They feel included. They feel, they, feel they are contributing to the activity at home. And, and let's look at the meal time. There's so much that these children can contribute to in the cooking, in the serving, in the arranging of the, you know, setting up the table or serving. In so many ways, the children can be involved. I've written prayer time. I mean, if you have a family prayer, then we all are there together to pray. And then comes the, uh, you know, TV viewing or movie together. So if the whole day is structured and if the children are involved in so many activities, where is the time for them to sit down and be engaged with gadgets? You know, this is the constant complaint. They're saying now that the children are at home, they want to be, they're all the time glued with gadgets. If they are involved with activities, other activities, where is the time? And I'm not saying no to a TV viewing. If, if there is the time and if we are all there together to sit and watch TV together, they're not going to ask for a separate time to view TV or to play with gadgets because they have enough activities on their hand. And, and then, you know, when all the above activities are done, 
we are free to do what? To talk stories, to read stories, to narrate stories. And if you have grandparents at home, if, you, if yours is a joint family, such a beautiful opportunity to listen to grandparents, their times, they must have gone through epidemics like this. And you know, it gives us so much of confidence to listen to them going through situations then and they are alive. Things changed. There was vaccination. There were difficult times, but it, it was not there forever. You know, to listen to them, it gives children the connect to what happened in the past and what can happen in the future. It gives them scope to imagine because this is the real story that the grandparents are narrating. And also, you know, we want them to read story on their own. If we are all sitting together, as I told you, children imitate what we do. If we want children to read stories or write, if, if the school has given them worksheets or if we want them to read and write, which is our constant worry during when all other work is done and when the, and the parents, the elders are sitting and writing, this is a nice opportunity for us also to sit down and write. Why not catch up with some writing or some reading, some pending books that, you know, we wanting to read, but we didn't get the time. Now COVID has given us a lot of time to do all that, all those, you know, uh, work that we so wanted to do, but couldn't automatically children will start doing that instead of chasing them to do it. If we start reading or writing or, you know, singing songs, uh, uh, writing lyrics, um, so many creative things that we can do. And I'm sure all of us are passionate about something or the other. We all have hobbies. I think, you know, whoever is passionate about stitching or painting or drawing, you don't even have to make extra efforts to teach children. If we do it ourselves, it, we will automatically pass on that passion to children. You know, uh, in the apartment just, I'm living just now, there were children who were just running around and constantly coming and calling my niece and nephew to go out and play. Yesterday I called them and I asked these girls, are you interested in stitching? I said, if you are interested, come back at five o'clock in the evening with a cloth and thread and needle. And I was waiting to see if they were interested because I, I, I've seen them only running around in the corridors and playing around in the evening at right at five o'clock, they came back. They came with a cover, with a cloth, a thread and a needle. And then I, I showed them, you know, basic stitches. These children, these three girls refused to go down to play. They were so interested because I am passionate about stitching. My passion without my knowledge, you know, I could have said I have work, I can't do now, maybe sometime later, but whoever, anybody, their passion, they'll find time. And I'm, this is my personal experience. I, whatever I'm passionate, pa passionate about, I don't postpone. I will find, I will look forward for an opportunity to share. And I'm sure everybody at home, uh, anybody and everybody has some passion or some hobbies. This is an opportunity to pass this passion and hobby to your children. And how about games? There are lots of games that can be played indoor and outdoors. Get creative with whatever available place you have at home, inside or outside. Get creative, play games with children. Let's look at, about why I told you all these things and what is the task of the child this child i'm i'm just going back to the rest of the slides just to remind you of what the tasks of the child he is creating his human personality of adapting to the time place and situation this situation is here to stay and this is the time and place that the child is going to adapt to and this is going to become part of his personality and he's creating memories and we all have to coexist in the situation at home. How? Fighting? You know, it's so upsetting to know that children, you know, without going to school, they are all at home with parents, uh, you know, especially in the, uh, in the villages, in the slum, where, uh, you know, underprivileged places, there's lots of violence. I was thinking, you know, if they come to school, they will get food. It's not just food. It's the physical violence that they're going through. The sexual violence that they're going through because they are available at home full time. 
and the physical abuse that the children are going through we have to you know think about all i i really don't want to talk negative i i i was thinking i'm not going to say anything negative about the situation i really want to talk only positive things and so let's go back to my positive of let's coexist to love respect be empathetic sympathetic at home if we are aware of the needs if the children are aware of the needs of the elders and the adults are aware aware, aware of the needs of the younger ones and if we are able to to cater to their needs we will be empathizing and sympathizing with them which will not just stay will not be restricted just to the home this this personality and this character of this you know that is created will pass on to the community and to the wider world for that it should begin at home and what is our role our role is to support and collaborate in this cosmic task of this child we just now saw the child the, the 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 task of the child we have to support this task of this child we have to collaborate with him, with the child help him in creating memories <clears throat> be mindful of their needs and support them appropriately create opportunities for purposeful engagement and involvement all this only we have to do the children are not independent to take care of all these and this is our role and this is our duty and what is that we want to take away from now please parents remain parents don't become teachers you, you we cannot have we cannot sustain a happy life coexisting with everybody if we become teachers because children very soon will get over that and will not follow your instructions and not follow your timetable you know parents have made suddenly have become uh, teachers and they have endless um, i don't know what they call you know teachers prepare uh, uh, i'm not getting that word just now and they want children to follow please parents remain parents children cannot get other you know other adults cannot become become their parents it is we who have to be mindful of their needs and support them in their task modify the homes into functional spaces and not into a school don't now suddenly have blackboard benches all books and pens and you know only academic related things let it be your home this child is not going to find another home so we we should be mindful of this that this is their space and let's make it functional for them to live their life living life is of brushing cleaning washing eating cooking you know having meals together praying together watching movie together and having fun time together reading stories together this is life and not just sitting in one corner and reading books and writing handwritings and writing tables and make you know uh, uh, doing uh, addition subtraction uh, subtraction and multiplication that's not life and we want them to learn so learning happens through experiences how can experiences happen only we can create opportunities for children to have personal experiences development and personality development everything happens only through experiences personal experiences learning happens through experiences so create let's create this situation for them where they create opportunities so that they learn just now i at least two times i spoke about creating memory why this situation just now is going to go down in memory decades from now children are going to share with their children and their grandchildren about this period what they are going to share are they going to share beautiful memories sad memories unhappy memories everything lies in us it is our responsibility to create happy memories for them meaningful memories for them where they will share it as stories enjoyable stories they are going to share from now so it's just how critical it is for us to create good memories for children i want you to think about this as well i think our ultimate aim and goal should be to nurture and support children to live peaceful and happy life 
if this if we constantly keep reminding us that children have to live happily and peacefully we will stop worrying about school that the, the school that they are missing the academics that they are missing you know we will stop worrying about that and start supporting children to live a happy life a meaningful life a purposeful life and a contributing life all of this will boost their confidence and and help them to feel you know that they have contributed to life just now in this home and such a child who has found peace and found happiness will be a contributing member to this united whole not just to the home not just to himself you know this happiness someone has within will radiate around and reach wider masses not just home the community outside but the united whole let's look at what montessori spoke about century before you know in in montessori's own words i really don't know how to push this uh, you know some part is missing in montessori's words she says besides the vital impulse to create himself all this while we spoke about creation the child is creating is perfecting you know by repeating the child is perfecting himself there's yet another purpose that the child i mean the child has is another duty is to fulfill in harmony something he has to do in service of the united whole if this is this you know this big picture that we are looking at the the service of the united whole has to happen this child has to find peace and happiness within himself first within his own home environment first i mean there's lots of other things that we can talk about what what to do all that will be second layer all that will layer on this creation and um, on this preparation of this home the home environment should be prepared first uh, the adults at home should understand the needs of the children first cater to their needs and help them to start living life as it comes with their whole self catering to their needs and find peace and happiness and confidence other things can much come much later writing and reading i'm, I'm not at all saying you know writing and reading is not part of their life but just now is it is not important just now in this given situation all of us have to find happiness and peace and with that kind of a solid with that kind of a solid foundation and base everything else can come sit on this strong foundation you know the one thing that i would constantly want to tell any adults for that matter is to just now not worry about you know children not going to school and see how best we can support them because there's no point sitting and cribbing and talking about what cannot what you know uh, we cannot contribute to we cannot do much about it because there's so much of uncertainty that we and just because there's uncertainty we just cannot sit and wait development is not going to stop that's going to continue we should be we should constantly think about that this child's development is not going to stop just because the child is not going to school and what is this child's needs and what is the development that we are looking at and this is this is what we have to reflect on and look at what has to be modified so that this child finds um uh, so that this child's needs are supported you know i to to go further i would also say that you know we can leave some you know uh, to clean the environment you know cons i'm thinking i don't know whether you use broom to clean your place in india we use broom we have a dust pan we have a mop cloth we use bucket we use water to mop the place so in our homes i would suggest our parents to have a small size bucket a small mop cloth and a small broom available for the child all the time in a given place so if these objects have a place and the child is introduced and oriented to these objects and how to use if you know if if they are shown how to use them 
whenever there's the need the, you know this child will not be able to talk to us and say i want to do this movement just now my urge is to develop my movement the coordination you won't be able to talk about it in a montessori environment we have all of the setup so whenever there's a need the child uh, picks up these activities and and it is available so there's scope for this child to make a choice and this making a choice helps in strengthening his will and this will the the will and the scope for choice with understanding you know together all these you know come together to do coordinated activity meaningful activity and a purposeful activity and these activities the end result is seen and the child can see and you know this uh, they also can repeat because there's an urge for repetition and only through repetition they can perfect these activities and this is simultaneously supporting their need to coordinate and strengthen their movements and also they are engaged so so you should now look at what kind of setups that you know you can do in your homes so that the children are independent to take care of the surroundings in maintaining in in beautifying the environment in their homes and um, you know to take care of their reading or uh, you can have some papers different shapes and different sizes different color papers put in a box and kept down and in a box you can have color pencils or crayons and have another box where you know finish whatever paintings and drawings children do once it's done they can put it in that box and keep and eventually if the children if they are ready for writing in their scribbling and in their drawing you can see their writing and then suitably we can help them you know uh, when i said reflect observe and reflect when you observe their needs if it is if we if if these things are there at their reach we will be able to see we will be able to observe their needs and then we will be able to support them suitably if we don't provide all these things and and we also know children ha don't have that kind of vocabulary to communicate even if they have they don't even know what their needs are they they only communicate to us through their through doing it through their movements through their activities and so that will help us to support them better and um, so if they are ready and if they want to read if you have few books don't have them in a shelf above but bring it to their uh, within their reach so that they can pick up a book and if they are sitting and turning a book uh, they are communicating to us that they want to read a story and then that gives us an opportunity to sit down and read for them maybe read to them or sit down and turn pages if they want us to read or narrate you know there are so many ways that we can observe children their uh, observe their needs if we let them if we create opportunities for them to show it to us